Okay, as you can see here, um, this is one. Uh, this is one B. Um, all the pieces for the one B for making a puppet in. Um, um, I'm going to make it in in Adobe After Effects, and this bee is actually going to turn as it as it flies around. So I have I have uh, um, basically other views of this bee on different layers. Um, but this last one right now it's only on one layer. So I just want to show you how each of these bee parts I need to put on its own layer to prepare it for um, the animation. So, um, L for the lasso tool, and um, basically, I'm just going to go around here and, and uh, you know, when the little zero shows on the lasso tool, I know I can close off that selection um, <clears throat> to uh, select the B. Um, Control X is going to cut it from this layer. Control V is going to paste it onto a new layer. And I go to that new layer. Um, double click on the layer name and rename it and um, then I'm gonna go ahead and turn that layer off and um, I need to go back to the layer that has the other parts on it click on on that layer um, and M for the mar marquee tool um, select the wings uh, control X control V to paste it into the new layer then uh, once each um, once each element has its own layer, I can I can save it. Just save it as all one document. I'm going to name it B, and I'll show you what it'll be like when I um, open it up in the animation program. And um, uh, I, I would greatly appreciate it if you uh, take the time to check out my animation work at uh, at uh, solomation.com. And uh, have a good day. Okay, as you see here, I have um, After Effects open, and and this is basically the animation that I'm working in um, right now. And um, I'm going to go ahead and get the B puppet ready. You can see I've got a couple of other puppets here right now. Um, so um, the really um, effective thing about After Effects with roster cutout animation is that um, Photoshop files uh, import into it pretty much ready to go. So over here in the project window I right click go to import file and I'm gonna go here into and I'm gonna choose B and when the dialog box comes up this file that I'm importing has all the layers, all the different parts of the B. And unlike other programs working with program scenarios, this is going to retain each of the layers and I have some choices up here. And because I'm bringing in I want to I want to maintain all the layers, I'm going to choose composition cropped layers and um, I want to go ahead and merge layer styles even though I don't have any um, even though I've gone ahead and flattened all the layer styles um, in the original document and choose OK and you can see that it imports it and what I get over here is uh, um, okay so here's the folder with all the different layers in it you can see that um, I had folders within the document for each B and that has created a um, a um, what do you call it I don't always maintain all the jargon okay so basically this is uh, um, these are the different um, compositions so if I double click on this one here, it'll open up the new composition all ready to go. And uh, let's see here, let me go ahead and open it in one. So here you have it. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and by clicking that little button down here in the, 
uh, what would you call this here, man? I'm, I forget the jargon. Okay, in the in the composition window, there's a little uh, gray and white um, checker box icon, and you can turn off the composition color and just have show where the transparency is at. And if you go down here in the need to look in the project no in the um, timeline window, um, it has all the different layers. So basically, um, you can see I'm going to turn them off here. These are all the different parts of the B that that automatically import into After Effects. Okay, so I'm in After Effects and I have all the different parts for this one um, I think I called I, this is actually a fly a fly puppet um, and I'm gonna go ahead and get it prepare it as a puppet um, so uh, let's go to the right wing here and select it in the timeline window and we're gonna go ahead and move it over here to the, the um, right um, it's kinda back over here so we kind of move it to where um, the pointy thing at the end is where the wing is going to connect to the body of the fly. Um, so up here you can see that um, here is the anchor point right now and it's in the middle of the wing. But what we want to do is we want to hold down the Y key and move the anchor point over here to the, 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 the joint of the wing so that it will rotate on that anchor point. Then we can go ahead and just make sure it's in place. So um, so that's all set up. And then we go down here, okay, um, in the timeline over here, um, we're going to go ahead and take the pick whip and, um, and we're going to parent the wing to the bee. Uh, so that whenever you move the B, you also move the wing to the B. And uh, um, go to the other wing and uh, move it up over here. Now, right now, um, this wing is in front of uh, the fly. And so what we need to do is we need to... in The reason that it's showing on top of the fly is because it's above it's stacked above the fly in the uh, um, timeline. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose it here in the timeline and move it down a layer so that it's beneath the, uh, the body. And I'll go ahead and move it back to show you what I'm talking about. So that's it. That's it above, above the, the fly layer and that's it below the fly layer. So we'll go ahead and, you know, move it into position. And um, and then we'll go ahead and take the Y, move the anchor point down over here. Um, if that uh, fly is kind of making it hard to see, I can go ahead and turn that off. Move the anchor point and make sure to take the pick whip and parent it to the... Um, the body part and um, so I'm gonna go ahead and and do that with all the other uh, parts of, of this puppet